Um, can you tell me a little bit about the garden? The Shippensburg Peace Garden was founded in 1993 by a group of peace advocates who were interested in gardening. Pauline Underwood was in her late 70s when she got this idea. Her husband was a gardener and she wanted to honor him in some way. And she is known for her peace philosophy. And that was a nice way to marry the two. Um, can you tell me just a little bit about the, the flowers that you chose and why you choose particular ones for the garden? When I came on board, the garden had already been in existence for seven years. And they had chosen to use a variety of whatever was growing in anyone's garden because funds were low. When I came on board, they had just received a garden a, a grant for $15,000, and I felt we could start over. Being an artist, I chose a color palette that was soothing to promote the peace theme. Soothing tones of gray, silver, white, pink, burgundy, to create a relaxing atmosphere when you enter the garden and sit. Can you tell me maybe some stories about the garden that uh, that remember that remind you of why you love working there, or um, stories about people who have visited the garden over the past couple years? Yes, many people have come into the garden. Some of my favorite, uh, the littlest one, the littlest ones come through the garden whenever they want to go to the, pool, the Memorial Park pool, which is right behind it. And they will ask their mommies, Mommy, can we go through the Peace Garden? It's so pretty in there. And it's just a delight to see them skipping and checking the flowers out as they make their way to the pool. I've had a, an eight-year-old tap me on the shoulder and said, Excuse me, I want to show you my tree. And he went over and he hugged the tree. I had a teenage girl tell me after there was some vandalism in the garden how upset she was that her particular bench had been damaged. And you could see that she was truly affected by that. And it was very touching for me to, to share her pain and that we would work this out together to get it fixed. Mm -hmm. And a few weeks later, a younger, a, a gentleman came by and he, he asked if I was in charge and I said yes. And he shook out, took his hand out, shook my hand and said, great job. Thank you for doing everything that you do here. Don't often expect teenagers to uh, give you that kind of approval. And it was very refreshing to see that. And then I think the most poignant example I have of people who love the garden. One morning I came into the garden and there was a gentleman sitting there at one of the benches. And he said hello, I said hello, and then he realized I was there to work. And he said, I come here every morning to pray for healing. I've come from Cuba and I have a disease that I'm getting medical attention here in the United States. And this is a place I can go to to ask for that. And not every, not every place I've gone has this, and you are very lucky to have this here in your community. And I thought, wow. I would have never known that the garden is being used in so many different ways. So I'm blessed to work there and to hear these stories. It gives me motivation to do more. Um, so I heard a rumor that, and things that people have told me, that playing music and speaking with flowers actually makes them grow. Now what do you think about this? Oh, that is definitely true. I've seen those studies as well. Uh, Penn State has put out numerous of those and they seem to think that classical music is the best plants like that rock music not so much <laughs> and I've seen that in my own garden where a plant hasn't been doing well and I will tell it it's on its last legs you need to improve and by some fate it does so I can attribute to that or test to that myself any particular any particular composer? Just curious. <laughs> no, I don't think they narrowed it down. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. All right. You mentioned before that there was some vandalism that happened within yes. the garden. Um, and what was the response to this? Normally, I do not publish negative situations, especially relating to the Peace Garden. I chose to, public, to publicize that particular event because it was so devastating and dramatic and I felt people needed to know 
what had happened there. Put it in the paper and stated the situation, and I was very pleased to have an outpouring of, of letters to the editor in support of the Peace Garden, and many people sending kind, generous donations to help rebuild some of the benches and replace some of the statuary that had been damaged. And you told me, uh, what, is, what are some of the, maybe some of the, the, the breeds of the flowers that you choose? Just curious for anyone who is a, who is a gardener, um, what kind of flowers do you usually are in bloom or that you like to put in the garden? I try to use the four season approach so that any time of year you would walk into the Peace Garden, you would find something of interest. Right now, it's winter. The ornamental grasses are still there. We have a variety of evergreens, whether they're broad leaf or a single needle leaf. The sculpture and the, the benches that we use, the, the design of the paths, all lead your eye in a certain way. So at this time, you'll be seeing the skeleton of the garden, which should be just as interesting as when we have all of the spring cherries. It's an amazing time to be in the Peace Garden at the end of April, beginning of May, when the weeping cherries, Yoshino cherries, Kwanzaa cherries, it's a mass of pink and, blue and white tulips, daffodils. There are flowers and trees that I've planted for scent so that you will get a nice uh, fragrance when you buy, walk by a certain plant. Casablanca lilies are especially fragrant in July. One of the plants that always gets attention in August and September is the Calicarpa, also known mm -hmm. as Beauty Berry. It produces a tiny little purple berry, clusters of them. And when the fall comes, those are highlighted even more by the yellow leaves. Anytime you're in the garden and people come by, they automatically gravitate towards that plant, with something different, and they always mm -hmm. want to know about it. And that's what I try to do, educate the public as well, put in things that are a little different. Well, as a master gardener, uh, what would you advice for students on how to keep plants healthy, especially during the winter months? Well, advice for growing any plant is to know something about the plant. Read the tag first and decide if you can really give it the conditions that are going to keep it healthy. That's number one. Plants don't like drafts, so a cold windowsill is not usually the best place for it. If you can place it maybe two, two feet away from the windowsill on a, a separate stand, still receive plenty of light and not burn it. The leaves could get sunburnt. They have a coating as well that can be damaged by too much sun. Never water it too much or too little. And I always use the finger test. Touch the soil and see if it's damp. If it is, it does not need water. Check it the next day. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome.